Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. He was serving a four-year sentence, but that could likely become life. What this inmate was just convicted of doing, coming up. Investigation closed. The fire department releases the cause of the fire that killed a Bakersfield mother as she went in to rescue her children earlier this year. Known as the Mother Teresa of Bakersfield, Wendy Wayne's spirit lives on. We'll introduce you to the newest inductees to be honored for their impactful leadership on this Thursday, March 28, 2019. Good morning. Great to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Tabitha Mills. In for Alex Fisher and Kevin Charette. And there was this weird wet stuff falling <laughs> from the sky when I drove in this morning. I was I was kind of surprised, but it's probably because I didn't pay attention well yesterday. You know, yesterday we did talk about uh, chance of showers maybe late last night. It uh, didn't really come in until early this morning. It's going to linger this morning just for a little bit, and then we're going to see clearing skies this afternoon. So that's what we're uh, going to be dealing with. We haven't picked up a lot of rain, under 500ths of an inch into the valley. I do have a slight chance of a shower in there through 7 a.m., and then throughout the afternoon we'll start to see the clearing skies and mid-60s by 3. Into the mountains uh, to Hatchby at 43, 100% on the humidity with a dew point at 43, so we do have plenty of cloud cover out there. A west-northwest wind at 16, and hour by hour here. We're going to start out in the 40s, 50s this afternoon. Again, a chance of showers early, and then throughout the afternoon we'll start to see clearing skies. New at sunrise, a man already serving jail time will spend even more time behind bars for the murder of his cellmate. A jury has convicted Travis Smoot of killing his cellmate at Kern Valley State Prison. Back in November 2015, deputies found Smoot's cellmate Larry Height unresponsive. During the investigation, Smoot was labeled as a suspect. Yesterday, a jury found him guilty of first-degree murder. Smoot will be back in court May 14th for his sentencing. He is currently serving a four-year sentence for assault with a deadly weapon. Kern County Fire has finished its investigation into a deadly house fire that killed a Bakersfield mother. Christina Stratton died in February trying to save her children from the flames. The kids managed to make it out of the house just as Stratton ran in to rescue them, but she didn't make it out in time. We've learned arson investigators say the fire broke out in a first floor bedroom. As we've reported, firefighters say the cause of the fire is accidental, but the possibility of an electrical problem can't be ruled out. A victory in the courtroom for the Bakersfield Police Officers Association. The BPOA is suing the city over a new state law that would give the public the right to see certain records related to police misconduct. The association says the release of such documents dated before January 1st would cause irreparable, irreparable harm to police officers. Yesterday, a judge issued a temporary ruling that stops the city from releasing the documents for now. And once a rabbit's out of the hat, you can't put it back in. And so that's the irreparable harm, because once your privacy interests have been uh, exposed, you no longer can get that privacy back. And so the irreparable harm is that we have to prevent the release of the records um, in order to ensure that their privacy interests are protected. These are things that members of the public need in order to trust, trust the police. This bill is for public safety, because if the community doesn't have trust in the police, what are we going to do? To be clear, this ruling only applies to the city of Bakersfield and the Bakersfield Police Department. It does not apply to other agencies, including the Kern County Sheriff's Office. The next hearing is on the issue is uh, set for May 2nd. 504 now, the Kern High School District is facing another lawsuit as a student says Centennial High School failed to protect him from being sexually assaulted. Cur court documents say the assault happened last May. The victim, a student diagnosed with high-functioning autism, says an older student locked him in a bathroom and sexually assaulted him. The lawsuit claims the victim had reported this student to teachers in the past and the attacker was supposed to be supervised at all times, but wasn't. The lawsuit says a security guard had to get the victim out of the bathroom. We've reached out to the district for a response. A representative said the district cannot comment on pending litigation. People looking to have their records cleared have an opportunity this week. Bakersfield College is hosting the One Justice Record Clearance Clinic. It's happening from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow in room 8 of the business building on campus. The free event is sponsored by BC Pre-Law Students. They'll be giving legal advice and helping people try to expunge their criminal records. A motorcyclist is in the hospital after colliding with a car in central Bakersfield. The crash happened just before 7 last night near 30th and Q Streets. 
when it's still 17 News. The biker was headed north on Q Street when a car turned onto Q Street from the alley and struck him. <laughs> the motorcyclist appeared to suffer a serious <laughs> leg injury. No word on how he's doing this morning. It's 506 now. The Department of Motor Vehicles <coughs> needs an overhaul. That's the conclusion from an audit released by the State Department of Finance. After months of investigating, auditors found significant deficiencies and an outdated organizational structure that create conditions for poor customer service at the DMV. Investigators say the deficiencies contributed greatly to the failed implementation of the Real ID program. Auditors cited a reactive culture within the agency that has soured the customer experience at DMV field offices around the state. The Secretary of Caltrans, which oversees the DMV, agreed with the findings of the audit and says the agency will fully implement recommended remedies. Bakersfield Assemblyman Vince Fong has been pushing for a broader investigation of the DMV. In a statement, he said, quote, there's a systemic and structural problem at the DMV that's simply undeniable. I have long been pushing for real structural reforms and audits, which have continued to be blocked or delayed. This is unacceptable. And we also reached out to Bakersfield Assemblyman Rudy Salas, who chairs the Joint Legislative Audit Committee. He told 17 News the problems at the DMV are appalling and unacceptable. He's currently leading a bipartisan audit to improve the DMV and make it more efficient, responsive, and accountable. It's an honor given to outstanding Kern County citizens, in honor of one whose legacy is well known. 17's Karen Waugh was at the Wendy Wayne Awards, where three local leaders were recognized for their impact. The ceremony is named in honor of Wendy Wayne, a Cal State Bakersfield alumna who passed away in 2012. And this year, CSUB's Kegley Institute of Ethics received a record number of award nominations. <laughs> Yvette Flores, Judy Snyder, and Daryl Thiessen, a trio from all walks of life. But all who've made a profound impact through their community service and all this year's Wendy Wayne Award recipients. It's amazing to be standing next to so many fantastic people who have done so much for our community. I um, am incredibly honored to just even be standing up there with, with all of them. Yvette Flores is a CSUB sophomore studying political science. Working with the Kern County Voter Engagement Project, she's registered thousands of new voters, most of them high school seniors. When I started registering people to vote, it wasn't in the aim of getting an award or recognition. It was just because I thought that this is something that the community needed. Flores aspires to be an immigration lawyer, and with the award came a $5,000 scholarship. Judy Snyder co-founded Kern County's original rape hotline, which eventually grew into the Alliance Against Family Violence and Sexual Assault. When we were motivated to start the hotline, it was an era when women were afraid to report or reluctant to report. Finally, honored posthumously, Daryl Thiessen, who passed away earlier this year. He, he was constantly the man that we could turn to for guidance, and he stepped up whenever he was needed. Thiessen served Kern County schools for 20 years, organizing programs for social learning, substance use prevention, and more. Certainly a beautiful night celebrating the spirit of the Golden Empire. I'm Karen Hua, 17 News. We're back in your 17 Health Watch. State regulators have hit a local hospital with a fine. The State Department of Public Health says four hospitals, including Kern Medical, violated standards in several incidents between 2017 and 2018. The department says Kern Medical failed to ensure the health and safety of a patient by not following policies and procedures. So now the hospital will have to pay more than $34,000 in fines. This is the third immediate jeopardy penalty for Kern Medical. The hospital released a statement that says, in part, we've conducted a thorough investigation into this matter and have developed plans with our hospital and medical staff to ensure an incident like this does not happen again. The fight against Valley Fever isn't happening just in Kern County. The San Luis Obispo County Public Health Department says the disease killed six people in that county last year. Brooke Martell from our affiliate station KSBY shows us how scientists are working to develop a vaccine. The disease is worse than it sounds. What starts with a fever, cough, headache, or other flu-like symptoms can oftentimes be misdiagnosed or lay dormant. We have a lot of people who can become infected. We have people that die almost every year of valley fever. Zoe Sunderland nearly fell into that category after she was diagnosed with valley fever in Visalia in 1992. I actually started getting headaches and to the point of 
not controlled by any kind of pain medications. The aftermath brought on serious complications to her health. Eight brain surgeries and nearly 30 years of treatment later, Sunderland says she is still experiencing chronic pain. What I'm getting now is the after effect of the damage to my spinal cord and my brain. Since 2016, at least four people have died from valley fever each year in San Luis Obispo County. If we look at Valley fever or fungal vaccines in total, there are none today. Dr. John Howard is the president of Applied Biotechnology Institute in San Luis Obispo. This is one of three labs in the country working together to create a valley fever vaccine. The three groups we've already shown now that our methods work really well in small animals. Howard says he plans to offer the vaccine as an injectable and an oral tablet but in the long term, move toward an orally administered vaccine. So what we're doing now is trying to get ready to do, prepare all the preclinical work that the FDA requires to get into a human clinical trial. That process could take one to two years, but until the FDA approves a vaccine, getting tested for the disease is your first step toward healing. And we recommend that you get tested after at least four weeks to make sure that the test reliably detects valley fever. As for Sunderland, while most of her life has been dedicated to fighting illnesses brought on by this disease, her struggles are in turn providing strength. If the only thing I can contribute at this point is helping other people with this illness, this is this is what I think I lived for. Again, that was Brooke Martell reporting. Dr. Howard says in the best case scenario, a vaccine could be offered in three to five years. 522 now, new research reveals a link between a woman's reproductive years and dementia. Researchers from Kaiser Permanente looked at health records of more than 6,000 older women. Their research showed those who started their period later, went through menopause earlier, or had a hysterectomy were more likely to develop dementia. Medical experts suggest that less exposure to the hormone estrogen over the course of a woman's lifetime may increase dementia risk. Welcome back to New 17 Business Watch. Robocallers will soon be asking, can you hear me now, when trying to reach Verizon customers. The largest wireless provider in the country released a new tool aimed at filtering those annoying automated calls. The free service will display a scam alert on a smartphone screen. To notify customers, the call is likely coming from a fraudulent source. Some calls will be blocked and not received by your phone at all. Verizon says it's collected more than 300 million spam and robocall numbers so far. But robocall services often use fake numbers, so the list is constantly growing. Landline phones will also have access to the protective services through caller ID. Well, Mickey D's is shifting its stance on minimum wage increases. The fast food chain says it will no longer lobby against efforts to increase minimum wage in the U.S. In a letter to the National Restaurant Federation, McDonald's says it believes wage increases should be phased in across all industries. The move could boost efforts by Congress to raise the federal minimum wage. Right now, it sits at $7.25. Here in California, the minimum wage is $11. McDonald's says the average wage at its corporate-owned restaurant is more than $10 an hour. Thousands of passengers across two continents are stranded right now. That's because Icelandic budget airline Wow Air stopped operations earlier today. In a statement on its website, Wow told passengers it isn't operating any more flights. The chairman of Wow says the company wasn't able to secure new funding. The airline is advising passengers to check flights with other airlines to get to their destinations. Wow was founded back in 2012 and specializes in ultra cheap flights between North America and Europe. Thanks for listening to the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's a 15-minute summary of everything you need to know about Kern County. There's a new episode every weekday.